Merry New Year, Animaniacs! Do you love end of the year lists? I know I do! And I know that I have that traditional list that I do, but I also thought there are so many animated works that come out in a year that I enjoy aside from feature films. So for funsies, I decided to do a list on my top 10 favorite animated moments of anything in 2013. Just keep in mind that this is a personal favorites list and not a highest quality best stuff ever list. Also, I haven't been able to see every single animated show, short, or special that came out this year, some of which I really wanted to see but isn't available locally yet, but by all means, feel free to recommend other animated works in the comments. I am king under the mountain. Smog the Dragon from The Hobbit. I think that the Hobbit movies are really long. Seriously, just way too long, but that's all the hardship I'm really going to give them. Already the point seems to be made as this movie is making less money than the last one, but if there's one thing you can definitely credit this film for is Smog the Dragon, because he is magnificent. But for some obvious reasons, there aren't a lot of promotional images of him, so sorry about the limited images, especially since this is an animation list and all. But Smog really was one of the oh my god this is so effing cool moments of 2013. They really nailed down his sheer immensity, and I love the suspenseful way he's introduced. He's greatly detailed, amazingly voiced, and thankfully his mouth moved naturally when he talked, which was really what I was looking out for. In fact, I think he was so impressive that I started nitpicking every little thing that didn't really add up. I mean, when he lifts out of the pile of gold, I just felt logically, because of how huge he was, that really more coins should have been moving. It all certainly should have been louder. Also, for that size, I felt there should have been more more auditory evidence of him interacting with his underground environment, like his body touching things or knocking things over. I mean, he's a huge frickin' dragon underground. But yes, the dwarf tunnels are pretty huge themselves, and his grace and silence make him, if anything, more terrifying. And hey, a dragon is actually a villain again! But that ending was a jip, man. Seriously, these movies are bumming me out. we can all agree that we don't really need the Toy Story films to continue. They had such a perfect conclusive trilogy that prolonging it would only betray Pixar's hopefully sticking new policy of only doing worthwhile, meaningful sequels. But I am all for what looks like a continuing trend of Toy Story shorts. These characters are so lovable and the stories from the perspective of toys have so many clever possibilities that as long as it's still done by Pixar, I can see a million of these. And Toy Story of Terror was like a perfect mini-movie in a package. The toys go to a motel, and during the night, something is lurking, causing the toys to go missing. And all the while, Mr. Pricklepants is pulling a scream and stating all the horror movie cliches as they happen. I'm just saying it's quite common in these types of movies for one unsuspecting character to wander off and vanish. This special is well-paced and surprisingly suspenseful. It's great that because of all the visual gags and situations that come naturally with characters being toys, the humor is incredibly natural while the story can be as dramatic and dire as it is, because, you know, it's happening to toys. And what's all the more impressive is that the short is actually about Jessie, and even is a callback to Toy Story 2 and her fear of being put in boxes. It actually works better as its own story than a Halloween story, but either way, this is an amazing special. Uh, where's Prickle Pants? <gasps> Well, he was standing right here just a moment ago. What are we gonna do now? He was the only one who knew what the heck was going on! Okay, I know that most of my viewing demographic is male, but seriously guys, just give me this! <laughs> Oh my god, this is ridiculous, this is shameless, this is such blatant over the top fan service, this is awesome. Free Iwatobi Swim Club is a swimming anime about male friendship in a swimming club with the most over detailed male chest I've ever seen, even on real men. Story-wise, it's about as simple but charming as the visuals are very, very, very pretty. Sometimes the fan service is so over-focused and over-detailed, I actually think it looks kinda unnatural and even gross. I mean, this series can say whatever it wants, but nobody looks good in a Speedo ever. But just, 
I just love that this exists, especially the ending animation. I love that there's this much detail. I love how smooth the animation is. I love all of their obvious excuses to put characters in water. I love my new boyfriend, Ray. I love that this caused a huge fanboy outrage in Japan just for the fact that this anime existed because it wasn't like they had tens of other male pandering anime released that year or something. This was the year when Kill a Kill came out. And in terms of long-lasting fangirl icons, Oron Host Club is not in any danger, but this certainly was a refreshing addition to anime this year, and seriously, Ray is mine, back off. Surprisingly, still making Red vs. Blue is also producing a web anime pronounced Ruby. Okay, no, it's not made in Japan, and ergo technically not anime, but its structure, to its humor, to its visual design, it's pretty easy to guess where this inspiration is coming from. It's essentially a demon hunting action version of Harry Potter, which mostly sports a female cast. As you can see in terms of animation, it's certainly not A grade, it's a web series after all. The smaller movements don't always work, but for a web series, it's really impressive. The designs are gorgeous. The world they created is interesting. It's really well written, it's frequently funny, and most of all, its action scenes are creative and intense. All the episodes, as far as I know, are available on Blip and YouTube, and if you haven't seen their four promos featuring their four female heroines, which are all action-based, please see them. I will also give loads of credit to their opening, which aside from effectively showing all of the characters and what their animation is capable of in a nice short amount of time, it is put to an amazing song. Song. I am greatly looking forward to where this show is going. You've lost the true meaning of Christmas. This is the day that a baby was born to remind us that we shouldn't raise an army of dead guys just because we can. Venture Brothers. Just Venture Brothers. Because Venture Brothers! It's been two years and we finally got a new season of eight episodes? Are you kidding me? Okay, they had an hour-long premiere and two specials. It is hard to measure up when their past two seasons were such game-changers story-wise, but Venture Brothers! It's still hilarious, still unbelievably clever, its animation just keeps getting better, and these characters are still awesome and amazingly voiced. If I had to pick a high point of this season, well, the premiere episode, What Color Is Your Clean Suit, certainly deserves recognition for just how much self-contained story they managed to pack in. But my personal favorite episodes were probably OS I Love You for its change in direction to the overall plot, and Mama's Boys for its humor and direction to the overall plot. It may take a while for them to come out, but I am just so glad that this series exists. See you in 2015 for season six? Are you kidding? We hand out fun size here, Hatred. Doc, we are 15 miles from the nearest house. We got electric fence, motion sensitive laser defense modules. The kid makes it to that front door, they're getting the big candy bar. Gee, anime fans, I'm not sure I heard you. Did anything interesting come out this year? <laughs> Oh yeah, that thing. That's actually pretty flippin' cool. Attack on Titan might not be the best thing ever. It can't really touch Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood where I'm concerned, but it is definitely the most exciting and, yes, epic event to come out of anime since Madoka Magica. That's right, Sword Art Online can suck it! The animation has amazing high quality. It has this great visually grabbing action concept of using grappling wires to attack zombie giants. There's a twist on a cliche for ya. Heck, it even has a mostly even-gendered cast, a lot of which are really likable. But the thing that gets special mention is that opening, because the song just by itself just screams epic battle, and the visuals really showcase its great animation and action. But someone is gonna have to tell me if the new season is gonna follow the manga or not, because if it is, I'm not watching it. We're getting a little bit too close to a lost situation here, and I want to know that all of these mysteries have answers before you leave us hanging for two years. And the thing that scares me the most is, like, the thought that I will wake up one day and I'll be 80 years old and I won't remember the last 40 years of my life. 
Story Corps is an organization dedicated to preserving history through the stories of regular people, and have recently started putting some of their stories into animated shorts. All real interviews with ordinary people. This year, they released Listening is an Act of Love, a special that combines five personal stories. Stories that range from childhood anecdotes, to stories of loved ones, to stories of hardship. And I found them incredibly moving. I also like this cartoony but lovely and charming animation matched with these stories. It makes them very accessible as well as very funny and touching. This special and their other shorts are available for free on their websites, and I greatly recommend that you watch some amazing emotional stories this holiday season. Do you remember another confabulation that I used to have? You used to think that your co-worker Barbara was your mom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Even though she's a completely different race than you. <laughs> Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they know. Let it go. If there's one single element of Frozen I agree with everyone else on, it's that Elsa's song, Let It Go, and the sequence with it is the best part of the movie. The song is the best Disney theme in years, even if it is Defying Gravity Part 2. Played alongside Elsa finally letting loose with her ice powers after years of repression, before the next scene where she'll immediately go back to repressing herself out of fear, making the scene narratively pointless. But for the scene itself, the song and the animation enhance each other wonderfully. Even if I think they could have been a bit more creative with what they actually had her make with the ice, I get the whole geometric thing is kind of a thing with the design aesthetic here. This scene does so much right. The joy on Elsa's face when she sings, the beautiful designs of the ice, the punches for emphasis in time with the music, just the fact that this is a f the world song from Disney. Also, Elsa has really nice dresses. I might have issues with Frozen, but I have none with this scene. The cold never bothered me anyway. Children is a beautiful, warm, fuzzy film about exactly what it sounds like. After making it with a Japanese wolf demon who dies, Hannah gives birth to two wolf children named Yuki and Ame, who can transform at will, sort of, into wolves. Naturally, it's hard on them growing up in the city where they can be spotted, so they move to the country. This film doesn't rely too much on the hardships of this family, though they certainly are addressed. It's more just a realistic but uplifting portrayal of how these children grow up the way they are. Most of the conflicts you think would arise and be a big deal in this situation are mostly treated with comedy, which helps the sweet tone of the film. But the definite high point of the whole movie is the standalone scene where the children and the mother play and run in the snow. That's all that happens. With its gorgeous score and its adorable animation, this is one of the most beautiful sequences I've ever seen. I've never had a human as a pet before. I think I'll call you Stinky. The name is Juan. Stinky is more accurate. Here's a controversial opinion. I don't think Legend of Korra is as good as Avatar. I know, who would think such a thing? And while I don't see why they couldn't go the anime route and just make seasons based on their released comic books, which are amazing, Legend of Korra is still entertaining and respectable as portraying how the world has evolved since the events of Last Airbender. But you notice how Avatar took a giant black and white good versus evil premise and was able to color it with some morally gray subject matter, while Legend of Korra's whole seasons tend to start with morally gray subject matter that turn into black and white good versus evil battles, literally. But I'm not here to review Legend of Korra, but everyone knows that the best episodes of the season were the episodes that did not have Korra in them, but specifically the Avatar 1 two-parter. These episodes were astounding on so many levels. Not only were they giving us the story on how the Avatar was created, which does have a lot of holes, not gonna lie, it is also a joy visually. To illustrate the ancient setting, the backgrounds and even the elements were drawn in the style of old Japanese ukiyo-e paintings or woodblock prints, which are gorgeous. Also, if there was ever any doubt before, it's pretty obvious which culture inspired the aesthetics of the Fire Nation. These episodes also just scream all of their Miyazaki influence, from the spirit designs down to their voice actors. You are not welcome in my oasis, human. You shouldn't be here. 
Get out of here now! What? It's like the exact same scene or something! Then, the action scenes. Because you're hard pressed to find action scenes on animated western television that rival Avatar battles. Honestly, just make the seasons all flashback to Avatar 1 or the original Team Avatar. Nobody's gonna complain. But this was an event. Heck, I'd say people just watch this without even watching the rest of the season. I think it'll be fine. Now I know I missed a ton, so what were your favorite animated moments of 2013? From movies, TV, anime, or even the web? I'll see you at my worst to best list, and everybody have a great new year!